Bill Barr was talking about, this is the attorney general, obviously, he's talking about what China does to, uh, to use business against us. Let's play cut one of, uh, of Bill Barr. China is asshole. <laughs> no, that's, I'm sorry. That's, that was his mind. That's what he's thinking. That's what he's thinking. Just play what he was saying. For American companies in the global marketplace, free and fair competition with China has long been a fantasy. To tilt the playing field to its advantage, China's communist government has perfected a wide array of predatory and often unlawful tactics, currency manipulation, tariffs, quotas, state-led strategic investment and acquisition, theft and forced transfer of intellectual property, state subsidies, dumping, cyber attacks, and industrial espionage. About 80% of all federal economic espionage prosecutions allege conduct undertaken for the benefit of the Chinese state. And about 60% of all trade secret theft cases have been connected to China. So this is a big deal because China is offering you a market of a billion people and people want, you know, the people want that money. And they, you say to your shareholders, well, you know, we're going to make a have all this new all this new trade and your shareholders are great, great, great. And meanwhile, the price for doing that is giving over your freedom and giving over our secrets and giving over, uh, you know, our ideas to the Chinese. So they benefit from everything we create without having to let their people be free. Right. The joke is that when with China, when you're dealing with China, the phrase win win means China wins twice. Now he starts to talk about, gets very specific about who is falling for this. So let's uh, play the second cut. This is cut four. Sadly, examples of American business bowing to China are legion. Take Hollywood. Hollywood's actors, producers, and directors pride themselves on celebrating freedom and the human spirit. And every year at the Academy Awards, Americans are lectured about how this country falls short of Hollywood's ideals of social justice. But Hollywood now regularly censors its own movies to appease the Chinese Communist Party, the world's most powerful violator of human rights. This censorship infects not only the versions of movies that are released in China, but also many that are shown in the United States theaters to American audiences. He goes on to give examples, and I'll play that in just a minute. But let me just play also, I think if we have it, uh, there was a drone picture the other day of these Muslim Uyghurs who were being carted off uh, in trains, and they're forced to kneel, and their heads are shaved, and they're put in trains, which... <laughs> they're playing, I mean, it's difficult to talk about because it looks so much like the Holocaust. This is Hollywood. This is, these are those glittering people. He, he's right. You know, these are these glittering people who show up every Oscar and tell us that we're stupid. We're idiots for voting for Trump. And that's essentially what they're saying. And Rob, Barbara De Niro, how brave he is. He's, he's, he's in such uh, economic disaster because he only made seven million dollars last year. And he gets up and he says, F Trump and how brave that is. But these are the Chinese. And this is what Hollywood does. Play the next cut from Barr. For example, the hit movie World War Z depicts a zombie apocalypse caused by a virus. The original version of the film reportedly contained a scene with characters speculating that the virus may have originated in China. But the studio, Paramount Pictures, reportedly told producers to delete the reference to China in the hope of landing a Chinese distribution deal. The deal never materialized. In the Marvel Studios blockbuster, Doctor Strange, Filmmakers changed the nationality of the major character known as the Ancient One, a Tibetan monk in the comic book. Changed it from Tibetan to Celtic. When challenged about this, a screenwriter explained that if you acknowledge that Tibet is a place and that he's Tibetan, you risk alienating one billion people. So think about that for a minute. If you acknowledge Tibet is a place, if you acknowledge that Tibet exists, you insult the Chinese. And I don't know if you alienize one billion people. It doesn't matter. You alienize, you alienate 
the Chinese Communist Party because the one billion people don't have a voice. The one billion people, you know, it's not just the Uyghurs. You, you know, I use that because it's so obvious and because those pictures are so powerful. It's so obvious this is this is fascism. This is uh, Nazi-like tactics that are being used against a race of people. A race of people is being destroyed and they're being raped. Uh, the women are being raped. And, the, you know, it's just it, it, it's as tragic and as cruel as anything that happened in the 20th century, which was a bad century, the first half of that century. Uh, and and the, the people who are lecturing us about who we voted for are supporting this. They're supporting it. They are silencing themselves to feed these people, you know, and, and this is the thing. But it's not just them. We know we know for a fact that Chinese women were tied down and sterilized and forced to have abortions while they screamed because they didn't want it to happen. We know that people were starved to death by the tens of millions in China. And, and we know this happened, you know, and it's like it hasn't gotten any better. These guys are just the same group of creeps doing this stuff. So now he goes on and he talks about Apple. He says, Apple recently removed the news app Quartz from its app store in China after the Chinese government complained about coverage of the Hong Kong democracy protests. Apple also removed apps for virtual private networks, which had allowed users to circumvent the Great Firewall and eliminated pro-democracy songs from its Chinese music store. The Hong Kong people have been crushed. They have been crushed. And, that you know, these are the people flying the American flags while the D-bags in Portland are burning American flags while the, they're protesting America because of what some imagined slight that they think or because one cop killed one person, which is bad, but it's not worth destroying the country over. They just think they're going to, you know, they can get away with it. So they're going to do it. So what does Apple say about this? Right. Uh, Trump's Huawei sanctions underscore U.S. dependency on China attack. Barr criticized Apple for transferring some of its iCloud data to servers in China. And China Apple spokesman Fred Sands referred to the company's past statements on the matters. And this is what it said. This is what Apple said. Each country in which we do business has its own customs, culture, and legal process. While our values and beliefs don't change from country to country, we are subject to each country's law. So look, you know, one country believes in freedom of speech and, and worship and freedom of, uh, you know, association. And the other country puts people in trains and sends them off to re-education camps from which they never return. So, you know, you, you got to go, you know, what, who are we to say? Who are we to say which is right and which is wrong? And this is Apple. These are the people who get up again and get again and let lecture us. Uh, what is it? Tim Cook. Is, is Tim Cook the head of Apple? This is the guy who said to us that um, that it, the conscience of a CEO was sacred. And that was why we were going to ban hate speech from our sites. That, you know, that's the speech he said. The conscience of a CEO is sacred. And, that, and so, you know, the, the, in Texas, the Senate uh, uh, Democratic Senate nominee, M.J. Heger, uh, said, you know, we, we can't criticize China, China because our immigration policies are the same as their Uyghur con concentration camps. This is the way they think. This is what they think about. You know, and again, when I say we have to set an, a, liber a liberty agenda, this, this counts. We have to call that, this out. When you put Black Lives Matter on an NBA jersey, you know, what, <laughs> while you're doing business with China, you suck. You suck. We should not be watching this. <laughs> 